there are the pretenders, and then there are the contenders. We are going to plant our flag and carry you to all the best highlights. Tap the ice and make the saves. Sports Night is next. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Sports Night. I'm Joe Young. And I'm Howie Shapiro. And Joe, we have a quick one tonight. We do. We're yep, going to fly through it. 15 minutes. Not a lot of highlights. Unfortunately, a real busy schedule yep. for, for the CTN team. Uh, has has kept us from getting as many highlights as we would like. We're still working on getting a uh, camera out to visit with the swim team to do a preview of them. And now we've got snow, so we got to try and preview the Nordic ski team we here. We do. Uh, we will try our best to get those for you next week, but uh, it may end up being until after the after the new year, and it'll be a mid year rather than a, than a preview. But exciting hmm. things happening with the swim team. We'll get to that in a moment. We'll start with the boys' hockey team. They're off to a bit of a rough start, and their schedule certainly isn't making it any easier to get going. Coming off their loss to third-ranked Elk River, Cardinals hosted ninth-ranked Centennial for their home opener on Thursday night. Cardinals kept it close through the first, but they just couldn't keep up with the mighty Cougars. First period, just after a Coon Rapids penalty kill, Centennial defenseman Ryan Kranz goes coast to coast, beats Ty Hansen high to the glove side, gets the Cougars on the board. That was the only tally in the opening period, but the Cougars really pounce in the second. Hayden Brickner getting around the corner shorthanded, able to slide the backhand between the pads on Hansen to make it a two goal lead. They add to it just 26 seconds later, Lucas McGregor spins in the corner, puts a backhand pass to the high slot, Jack Many. Tease off on the one-timer, the floodgates have opened. A little less than two minutes later, Centennial on the power play. McGregor allowed to walk in from the point. He fires a wrist shot high on the stick side. That made it 4 0. Centennial adds three more in the second and two in the third to skate away with a 9 0 win. They were a good squad, no, no doubt about it. In fact, they played Elk River on Saturday. Elk River beat them 3 1. So you can imagine how good Elk River is as well. And the Cardinals on Saturday hosting Totino Grace, and they come up just short against the Eagles, losing 2-1, to one, dropping them to 0-6 on the season. Michael Crosby, the lone goal for the Cardinals. Ty Hansen made 36 saves in the loss. Cardinals outshot 38-16. to 16. They've got a couple of games coming up this week. These are the first divisional games uh, of the season. They host uh, Spring Lake Park on Thursday and Irondale on Friday. Both are beatable squads. Yes, absolutely. Cardinals will have to be on their A game and certainly need to find more offense. Only half a goal a game through their first six. Win goes a long way, and they certainly need to find one here. At, uh, you know, in the last number of games, they've it's been tough. Two to one loss. They're in that game against Totino. Unfortunately, they couldn't get the W. Girls hockey team had trouble scoring last week. They only had two goals in their two games, but it was enough because they get back to back shutouts from Sammy Miller. Hannah Schultz getting both goals. She had a goal from Mallory, Mallory Corrigan on Thursday against Spring Lake or against uh, Champlain Park to get the 1 0 win there. And then on Saturday, they beat Tatino Grace by that same score down at Parade Ice Gardens. Hannah Schultz's goal came unassisted and shorthanded. Sammy Miller made 17 saves. And there you see it. Good numbers. They outshot him almost 2-1, 32-17. Uh, road gets a lot tougher, though. Yeah. The Cardinals host Maple Grove on Tuesday. The Crimson currently ranked second in the state. Their lone loss to number one ranked uh, Edina. Then the Cardinals at Irondale on Friday, a very winnable game. I shouldn't say the Cardinals. Uh, this SLPCR squad at hard not Irondale to. on Friday. Hard not to, but we do correct ourselves. Well, the wrestling team, you know, they had a busy weekend with four matches in just two days, and the results are impressive. On Friday night, the Cardinals travel up Hanson Boulevard for the conference opener against the Andover Huskies. This is a team the Cardinals should beat, and they left no question that they will be a powerhouse again this season. Coach Adams called on the lower rights to step up, and so far, they're answering the call. Coon Rapids trailing 4-3 after two matches, then Zach Thomas will start the pin parade at 120. Gets his man on the cradle, puts this one to bed quickly, just 49 seconds to the pin. Gabe DeGreese followed that with a 29 second pin at 126. Moses Madimba got a pin at 132. And this is David Weiser at 138. He has to work hard for it, pays off late in the second as he gets the pin and pushes the lead 27-4. Move to 182, Nick Berg, great use of the half Nelson to turn his man over right in the middle of the mat. He goes chest to chest, gets his pin in a time of 110. Up next, 
Jack Shack. Great to see him back healthy after an injury during the football season. And he adds to the Cardinals pin count, pulling his man to the mat early in the second period. Heavyweight captain TJ Mandy currently ranks sixth in the state, and he's off to a great start. Makes quick work of his man, getting a pin in 113. Cardinals win 12 of 14 matches, eight by pin, and easily win this one 63 to 7. A dominating match, no question. Yeah, and that's the kind of thing they want to see against a, a lower end team in the conference like Andover, and that's exactly what they got. Cardinals hosting the board Highland Duels on Saturday. Uh, not as big a tournament as it has been in years past. It turned into uh, a quad meet, uh, and the Cardinals were dominant. They beat Rochester John Marshall 48 19, then beat up on White Bear Lake 59 10. The closest match of the afternoon for the Cardinals was against Moundsview, but they get the better of the Mustangs winning 38-29. There you see some of the more impressive finishes. Luke Rotzine, a 3-0 uh, afternoon with three pins. John Fabodny had uh, was also 3-0 with a pin and two tech falls at 106. And there you see it, those lower weights really uh, cashing in. Zach Thomas went 2-1 with a couple of pins. So did Gabe DeGreese at 126. And Tim Mandyke, uh, 2-0 at heavyweight with a couple of pins. Uh, the third one in the uh, in the one against, I, I think it was in the Moundsview, uh, they ended up forfeiting the the heavyweight. But it was one of those three. Either way, he only got on the mat twice. He came away with two pins. Uh, wrestling coming up there at the Minnesota Christmas Tournament down in Rochester this weekend. And then they will host St. Francis, a big-time rival in the section next Thursday. And Howie, we'll be there! All nice, right. Nice start to the season for them. No, yes, no question. absolutely. Gymnastics team opened its season last Thursday with a trip to Elk River, and the results, very encouraging. Cardinals came incredibly close to their goal of 130 last season. And while they didn't quite pick up right where they left off, their opening score is reason for a lot of optimism that they will not only get to 130 this year, but vault right on past it. Coon Rapids starting on the vault, one of their stronger events. Aliyah Vu with a front handspring with a full twist. She takes second with an 8.3. Captain Hannah Gross will lead the team all year. She starts out right, took first in the vault with an 8.6. Gross really worked hard on her weaker events in the offseason, and it's already paying dividends. She wins three of the four events against Elk River. This routine on the uneven bars would get her a 7.85. Beam, another event she spent a lot of time on over the summer. She does have a little step on the dismount, but still gets first place finish with an 8.35. Some of the Cardinals newcomers are adding strength and depth to their lineup and showed on the floor against Elk River. Rachel Detters with a good tumbling run here. She scored an 8.15 to tie for sixth place. Cassie Rushmeyer was the Cardinals leader on floor. Good strong landing on that run. Helps her to a fourth place finish with an 8.325. Cardinals score a very solid 125. Come up just short against Elk Rivers, 128.8, but 125 right where they wanted to be to start the season. Yeah, tough loss, too, just uh, just by a few points. So, But, yeah, they're, they're definitely right where they wanted to be to start the season. Nowhere to go but up, obviously. This week, uh, they are in Champlain Park for the annual Luau Invite, and then they will be at Park Center next Tuesday. Swimming and diving team getting its season going last week as well. They went up against the Elks. And they come up short with a 100 to 73 loss, but some very impressive things to talk about. We talked about his sister yes. all season long. Uh, Megan Schultz, he had a great season. Her, his, her seventh grade younger brother already assaulting the, the middle school record books. Uh, he's, I, I think the in the 200 IM and 500 free, he's like second and third in middle school right Crazy. now. But he broke the 100 free record for middle school leading off the the relay that held almost 20 years ago by one tony swanson pretty good swimmer he was no a question. pretty good swimmer um Rossell was second in diving alex schmidt second and third place finishes in the 100 free and 200 free and matthew struss 100 fly third place wins the 100 back technically he finished third place because they had finished scoring for elk river but it's a third place all-time finish for middle school records because right. he's also still in middle school so that's very encouraging on saturday they had the northwest suburban conference relays that's a kind of a different event cardinals finished fifth but more importantly mr schultz went out and just broke another 20 year old 
Tony Swanson record by leading off with a, his 200 free leading off that relay uh, got him that record. So no, Nothing but a thing. Pretty impressive start to the season nice. uh, for the boys. As I mentioned at the top of the show, hopefully we'll be able to ca get a camera out there and, uh, and get a preview for you next week on Sports Night. Cardinals are at Park Center on Thursday. They host Champlain Park next Thursday. Nordic Ski Team, what a gift they were given over the weekend from Mother Nature. Six inches of fresh snow. Let's get that season underway. They were supposed to start last Thursday. That was postponed. Uh, they will start this Thursday with, uh, with an age group race at Elm Creek, and then they have a skate race not until after the uh, first of the year. Alpine Ski Team, they still have another week to go before they get their season underway. Their first race is next Tuesday, and then they will be off until Thursday the 5th. Boys basketball team, just one game this past week, but always nice to see the Cardinals on the good side of running time. It didn't finish with that 35-point bulge, but the Cardinals had it at least for part of the second half, and it was running time until White Bear Lake closed the gap later in the half. But an 84-52 win for the Cardinals. Three guys in double digits, including uh, Tyreon Johnson, who put up the double-double with 18 points and 10 boards. Uh, Lionel Warner led the way with 21 points. Dial the wall had 19. Sam Carver, eight points, had nine assists, almost had uh, a double-double. And Winston had six points, two boards, and five steals. Cardinals winning all over the place in that one, as you talked about uh, with, with Coach Agoric. They turned him over early and often, and they took advantage. Oh, no no doubt about it. Uh, I, I believe they turned him over 29 times in that game. So pressure, and that's what they want to do. They want to come out fast in their first two games. They've been able to do that. Uh, a close win in the first one and a blowout in the second. Well, the road gets a bit tougher this week. They'll host Elk River on Tuesday. And Howie? We'll be there! They also host Spring Lake Park on Friday. And Howie? We'll be there! There you go. It's a good thing. I hope we're actually really going to be there. So. Well, that's the plan. It wouldn't be the first time I've looked like a fool. The girls' basketball team had three games last week, including opening the conference schedule against a very highly ranked Park Center squad. The Cardinals knew that they would need to be a better defensive effort than they had against Forest Lake, especially on the perimeter. They also knew they would have to cash in on every opportunity they could on the offensive end. Pirates very patient on offense, opens up their 6-3 post player, Michaela Hayes, with the easy basket underneath to start their scoring. Cardinals keeping it close early going. Destiny Artis able to step up and get the steal. She races in on the breakaway. Her layup won't fall, but Caitlin Hagstrom is right there behind her to clean up the glass. Pirates lead by three. Then they start going to their moneymaker perimeter, penetrate and dish, and it works. Ann Simonette putting up one of th Park Center's eight three-pointers in the first half. That's how they're able to blow the game open again. Good look to find Megan Dubois with a space at the top of the key. Nine point lead at that point, but they would lead 44-17 at the half. Cardinals need some answers in the second. Nicole Fraser stops, pops, and drops a three-pointer to start the second half scoring. She was one of three players to lead Coon Rapids with eight points. Cardinals able to move the ball and convert on offense a little better in the second, but never really threaten the lead. Hanneman also had eight. The Pirates' perimeter shooting was impressive all the way through the lineup. They had 12, count them, 12 three-pointers in the game, and they cruised to a 68-44 win. Yeah, very good basketball team. They did not get any better on Thursday when they hosted Armstrong. They lose to the Falcons 50-39. They did get their win, uh, broke that streak against Duluth East on Saturday, beating the Greyhounds 59-47. Uh, girls basketball team is at Elk River on Tuesday. They're at Spring Lake Park on Friday, and uh, we will have results of that for you next week on Sports Night. Here's what we have coming up for you. Boys basketball against Elk River on Tuesday and against Spring Lake Park on Friday. Then next Tuesday, we get to see the girls basketball team against Henry Sibley. But that's going to do it for this edition of Sports Night. I want to thank everybody out there for joining us. Continue to support everything we do here at CTN for the entire crew, including Howie Shapiro. I'm Joe Young saying goodnight.